also I am aware that you are using Wokbuk Unison instead of some other Stalinist, Maoist, and Trotskyist tendencies. So what is so different with the workers' communism? How is that different from Leninism, Stalinism, Maoism, and Trotskyism? Well, Stalinism has nothing to do with Marxism or communism. Stalin actually ruled the Soviet Union. See, maybe I should go a bit further back. I believe, or worker communism is, is on this position and idea, that the Russian Revolution, the October Revolution, failed in the first decade. So by the time that, like by the end of the 20s, 1920s, when Stalin took power, it was almost a total failure. So what we you had, it was Russian nationalism as a, the ideology of trying to industrialize the country and run the capitalism. So it was this urge for progress in the capitalist sense of the word. So Stalin had, I don't, I don't care about what he was in the beginning. He was in the Bolshevik party and fighting, but people changed. We've seen that over throughout the history. Once he took over, Soviet Union was not a socialist country. But to be honest with you, it never became socialist. The government was a worker state, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to bring socialism about. But because of the war, because of the attacks by the imperialist powers, because of its the economy being backward, socialism never became a sort of kind of its political economy. It was fighting, but the, the state was a worker state fighting for that, and it failed. So it became what we called state capitalist. So to us, Soviet Union was never a socialist country. It was a state capitalist. This is a study. Mao, he was a nationalist, leftist nationalist. Had nothing to do with Marxism, but because there was Soviet Union and they were supposed to be socialists and they got together, then in the, the big, in the first, um, 50, 40, 50 years of the 20th century, communism was very popular. There were communist movements everywhere, in Germany, in Europe, in China, in everywhere. In, uh, but the communism that was actually in the forefront was not a sort of a communism in the sense of Marxist term of communism, but it was more like reformist, anti-imperialist, state capitalist in Europe, in all over the so this is with Mao. Trotsky, well, Trotsky himself was a revolutionary and was working with Lenin, and he also got killed by um, Stalin. Stalin. Himself was a revolutionary, but the Trotsky's movement, I think, is also a bourgeois left movement. It's never uh, actually has that. I mean, you don't. It does not have that socialism in in that sense of the word. Well, all I can say to people, to, I mean, Mansur Hikmat has talked about this and written about this. Some of his work have been translated. Unfortunately, a bulk of his work is not translated yet. But his work, some of his work on the Soviet Union, the question of the Soviet Union has been translated and it's on his website. Uh, or he has a very interesting work, left, leftist nationalism, bourgeois nationalism, something like that. I don't remember. He re wrote it in English uh, to begin with, and that's on his website to get an idea of what he means by these things. I think he was he, he was a Marxist revolutionary, and he had a lot of contribution to Marxist theory and uh, socialism in a real sense of the word. So we. As a party, we, we sort of had these positions, and this is my position as well. And when I talk about councils, of course, I mean, you can say it's Soviets or councils. In, in Russia, they were called Soviets. Yeah. In other countries, they were councils. councils. I'm not going to get into the sort of um, um, semantic, sem semantics here. Uh, what I mean is, is the real organization of people in every level of the society from factories, universities, hospitals, schools, even neighborhoods. 
they get together in general assemblies, they discuss, they decide, they uh, choose their representatives to go in higher stages to um, sort of um, represent them. Representatives that are, you can call them if you not, don't agree. They're not going to be there for five years, get salaries, just like the parliaments you see. No. Uh, so we have them all in our program, which is called A Better World. That's translated in many different languages. Yeah. That explains what we mean by councils. And I'm hoping that people now in Iran would create their councils, their general assemblies. This is our only uh, defense against uh, real sort of regime change and having the bourgeoisie come back again in different shapes of form. The essence would be the same. If you want to have capitalism in a country like Iran, maybe two years you have to sort of go on a little bit slower, but you're going to have another coup d'etat. You're going to have another uh, uh, sort of attack on the society, take all the freedoms, put people in jail, torture them, kill them, execute them. This is going to be the story. It's been everywhere in the world, if you look at it. If you want to have capitalism, you're going to have torture, you're going to have political prisoners, you're going to have uh, oppression, you're going to have inequality, you're going to have poverty, you've got all of that. That comes with it. It's known. So, to my opinion, at this stage, creating councils would be the best defense people could have against this scenario. 